All right. Again, um, this episode is going to be extra long. I am still going to do a patrons portion. So you can go to patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. Um, and I will discuss the other problems that I have with Julian Assange. I don't view him as a hero at all. Like so many people in my circles do. And I know by saying that I don't view him as a hero at all um, is going to cost me followers and probably some patrons. Um, I do view his case as important enough to not be concerned about how I personally feel about him because it has, it has implications far reaching well beyond him, right? Julian Assange would be dead and gone in 50 years, but the precedent has been set. Uh, if the United States is, is successful in extraditing him and charging him and, and um, finding him guilty, they would have set the precedent that gives men like Attorney General William Barr, Donald Trump's um, attorney general, gives him the ability to prosecute journalists who exercise their first. Essentially, it cracks down on the First Amendment. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. I'll discuss it more there. I want to shift gears to talk about. Um, actually, let me skip down. I want to, I want to talk about what's at stake in this election. Um, Dan Coates, who was Donald, Donald Trump's former director of national intelligence. He penned an op-ed in the New York times, uh, entitled what's at stake in this election, the American democratic experiment. The American democratic experiment is at stake in this election. And he's suggesting, he said, Congress should establish a bipartisan commission to monitor voting and ensure that laws and regulations are followed. And I want to read a couple of lines from uh, what he wrote, actually quite a few lines, but uh, I think it is, is important enough for us to discuss it at great length. Here's what he said, quote, our democracy's enemies, foreign and domestic, want us to concede in advance that our voting systems are faulty or fraudulent that sinister conspiracies have distorted the political will of the people, that our public discourse has been perverted by the news media and social networks riddled with prejudice, lies and ill will that judicial institutions, law enforcement, and even national security have been twisted, misused, and misdirected to create anxiety and conflict, not justice and social peace. He went on to say, if those are the results of this tumultuous election year, we are lost no matter which candidate wins. No American and certainly no American leader should want such an outcome. Total destruction and sowing salt in the earth of American democracy is a catastrophe well beyond simple defeat and a poison for generations. An electoral victory on these terms would be no victory at all. The judgment of history reflecting on the death of enlightened democracy would be harsh. I know that's a lie, and I actually have another quote for him that I want to, from him that I would like to read to you, but I, I want to stop there because here's why all of this is important. I've been personally feeling the nudging of the end of our democracy. I feel like it's just been at the doorsteps, and I feel like it is, we're at a crucial juncture where the election in 2020 will be the determining factor whether or not America actually survives. Now, a lot of people dismiss that because they think that what we have, we will always have. They think that the stability that we have, we will, we will always have. They think that America is too big to fail. Um, I think America is too big for us to let it fail. But others feel like it's just inevitable that America would always be here. But there's something different about this election. And that thing that is different is not only Donald Trump's blatant attempt to undermine the election, but it's the willingness of his co-conspirators to play their role. It is the willingness of Attorney General William Barr to bend and break the Constitution in favor of Donald Trump. It is the willingness <clears throat> of all of his supporters who are willing to go as far as into civil war. They are actively preparing for a second civil war. All of these people are playing their role and they are setting the standard so absurd that they have sold into the minds of 
half of this country, half of the people who are going to vote in this election. Donald Trump has successfully woven into their thinking that the only way he can lose is if Democrats cheat, if Joe Biden cheats. Now, you take all of these components, you put his followers who are ready and been, they've been ready to go into a second civil war since the first civil war, quite frankly, but most certainly since he, since the election in 2016. You take the fact that they have been patrolling the country. They have been going from state to state with their armed militias. They have killed people and they have shown that they are in league with our policing agencies. You add that with a political party in the Republican Party that is willing to do whatever Donald Trump says. You add on top of that conservative justices all across the country that Donald Trump has appointed. You add on top of that the Department of Justice being headed up by a man who views his job to be the as being to serve the president personally and not the American people. And finally, you add on top of that a president who has no regard for anything else but his own ego. And you do have the elements of the demise of this democracy. And I am tired. We've already lived, folks, we've already lived through one one. We're living in the middle of one historical moment. 2020 is bad enough with the coronavirus. Can we not add a civil war, a second civil war on top of it? Let me read a little bit more from Dan Coates. Um, he said, quote, the most important part of an effective response is to finally, at long last, forge a genuinely bipartisan effort to save our democracy, rejecting the vicious partisanship that has disabled and destabilized government for too long. If we cannot find common ground now, on this core issue at the very heart of our endangered system, we never will. Our key goal should be to reassure, should be reassurance. We must firmly, unambiguously reassure, reassure all Americans that their vote will be counted, that it will matter, that the people's will expressed through their votes will not be questioned and it will be respected and accepted. I propose that Congress creates a new mechanism to accomplish, to help accomplish this purpose. It should create a supremely high level but bipartisan and nonpartisan commission to oversee the election. This is critical. And I, I am I listen. I clearly will have a litany of things about Dan Coates, both past and present, that we can use to attack him. But why? Because the sentiment of this article cuts to the core of what we are facing right now. We are literally facing a moment in American history where we can continue with this experiment in democracy or we can see it all burn down. And I say this, I, I, I actually want to say something else here and I'll expound on it more in the patrons episode. You guys are good. The patrons get an hour and a half today. It's like, wow. <laughs> Um, I know a lot of people fancy the idea of America, not a lot of people. I know some people fancy the idea of America crumbling because of all of its past crimes, because of its war crimes, because of its genocide, because of all the things it has done wrong throughout American history. I don't fancy that notion. I don't look forward to the demise of America because of what it means. Look at Syria. Look at how in Syria you can go from one year celebrating a birthday in a normal, stabilized, like whatever you define normal, whether you define it as a dictatorship or what, what, but there was stability to the point where now Syrian refugees are dispersed across the globe. So many died trying to leave Syria. So many died in Syria. Their cities are, have been leveled to the ground. When we talk about undermining American democracy, we're not talking about anything short of that, where we would have to become uh, refugees seeking asylum in other countries, where our cities could be leveled, where uh, a dictatorial regime would enact punitive actions with our military inside of our borders. It's not hyperbole to say that we are on the cusp of going in that direction because of how our politics have been inflamed. 
and because of how Donald Trump in particular, I don't care how many problems we have yet to fix. I don't care how many problems of, of racism and white supremacy and, and, and income inequality and work. I don't care how many things we have yet to fix. Believing that Donald Trump is going to somehow undermine America and from those ashes of the former America, something better can emerge is absolutely effing ridiculous. Because the ashes of America include your ashes, my ashes, the ashes of our family, the ashes of our children, the ashes of all of our dreams. And most importantly, possibly the ashes of all of our aspirations to make this a better society for marginalized people. It will include the ashes of the marginalized, the people that we purport to fight on behalf of. It will include the ashes of the homeless. It would include the ashes of the LGBTQ community, the trans community. It would include the ashes of every single person, every single family and their dreams. And so for anyone, who gets this giddy sensation with the idea of maybe it's best that America is destroyed, you're out of your fucking mind. And we don't have time for that. And so I will not sit back in this election and watch as Donald Trump actively undermines our country to the point where we will have nothing but rubble and ashes. Here's the other thing. I got the sneaky suspicion that people who like to revel in that idea as if it is a good idea that, hey, America's been so bad that let's just burn it down. Y'all will be some of the first motherfuckers to get out of the country and try to go seek asylum. While people like me who are like, hey, 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 let's not let's not go there. Let's 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 try to work through this system. The other side of me is I'll be right here fighting this motherfucker to the end. While all of these people who are like to tweet and joke about, oh, you know, you know, don't try, like, let them burn it down. Let America burn down. You guys will be gone with the first first shipment of refugees out of this country. So I don't really have time or stomach for people who don't take the seriousness of this moment. Or they see the seriousness of this moment and they dismiss it because they're like, oh, well, fuck America. But there's a difference between fuck America and goddamn America. Yes, goddamn America, because there's so many things that are broken and that, have, that we have to fix. But we don't fix it by going through obliterating this country, falling into another civil war. And I don't know how people can look at this moment and not see that that's what we're on the edge of. We are on the edge of that because we have a madman in the White House who does not care if he destroys this country he only cares about his ego do you understand that's all he cares about and if he has to destroy this country in order to satiate his own megalomania he will do it and they are actively preparing to do it and so if that means we got to work with people that we politically disagree with on the highest or in the highest order to stabilize this country at a moment where we are failing our life. We are on life support and we are fading away. We have to stabilize the country in order to make progress from here. We cannot make progress from the ashes because what will we be leaving our children and our grandchildren? The same exact thing that is being left to the children and the grandchildren of Syria, of every other nation that the United States has actively participated in undermining. I get it. Yes. Goddamn America. But we don't fix our problems and we don't fix the problems of marginalized communities by obliterating this country. And I honestly believe that that is what we are on the verge of. And I honestly cannot stand the people who are sitting by getting a little kick of joy out of it because they think, well, let's just burn it all down. Honestly, because I think you guys will be the first ones to leave. And here I'll be fighting.
It's always the people who talk the most cash money shit that don't really be about that life. And I'm trying to tell y'all, we need to seize this moment to preserve this little pitiful, pathetic attempt at a democracy so that we can fix it without having to go through the ashes. <laughs>